Hello and welcome back. So in the last video, we started looking at how to show specific buttons. We looked at specifically the physics button. This will without a doubt be the most useful one for your users, because like I said in the last video, this is where users can kind of control the spring length, the gravity, and a whole bunch of other factors that are going to be instrumental in producing a very specific type of graph and being able to work with it in real time. In this video, we're going to talk about a couple other options that you can kind of play with, at least the ones that are the most important. I think we'll get through them all in this video. Uh, the first one we're going to talk about is edges, then we're going to talk about nodes, and then we're going to talk about interaction. These are really going to be the only ones that are going to be super useful for you that have some kind of nuances that merit explanation. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to be just simply working with uh, the first 10 uh, items in this list here. And so I'm going to go ahead and map this out right now. And I'm only doing 10 right now, just so you can kind of get a sense for how it's going to look. And we can kind of work with it much more quickly. So as you can tell, I now have all of this information over here. These are now the edges uh, variables that are edges options that I can kind of interact with. And I'm going to speak a lot more about this in the next video when we start producing very specific, um, more dynamic types of edges. And the way in which we're going to interact with them here in this video is by clip simply clicking this smooth option down here. And once you uh, click that smooth option, you'll find that you have a whole bunch of new options over here to kind of create different types of graphs. And if you notice, uh, we actually see a different looking edge in our graph right away when we click this. Now we see it kind of curved. And it's not going to be immediately clear that, about the benefits of this until the next video when I start talking about dynamic edges. Right now, it just looks like it's just changed the, the length of the edges. What we've actually done is something a lot more complicated. And in the next video, you're going to see how by selecting dynamic edges, you can see multiple relationships a node has with another node. Uh, right now, if you don't have this selected, you can only see one specific type of relationship. Dynamic edges are how you kind of interact with that. So these are kind of some of the other options that you have. You can kind of have your display two uh, arrows show up as larger than before. Now you see they're, them growing. Uh, if you've got middle edges uh, selected, you can actually uh, see that as well. Right now, I haven't been able to actually get this to actually show them. You have to actually map this out ahead of time. But uh, once you have that mapped out on the kind of uh, arrows that you want to see, you can actually change the size of the arrows. Uh, a lot of this stuff, to me at least, on my end, is a little bit buggy. The most useful aspect of all of this is going to be some of the stuff down here where you can actually start kind of changing the label sizes and the edges if you have labels on your edges. But really the most useful thing is going to be um, this width option here that you see. You can change the width of the edges and this smooth option here, which again, we're going to get to in the next video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just move that away. And we're going to do uh, the other option that I want to talk about, or one of them, and that's nodes. So I'm going to pull uh, this down. And now we should have, yep, we have nodes here. So again, a lot of these buttons are a little buggy right now in PyViz. I have not been able to get them to consistently work on my end. Instead, you need to kind of program a lot of these in ahead of time. But there are some things that you kind of can actually play with here. Uh, one of the things that you can kind of play with, and this is, again, only going to work for nodes that have a label outside of them. But one of the things you can do is you can change the node size. And the reason why it only changes the triangle here is because, like I said in, I think, video three or four, the triangle is a shape that has the label on the outside, and only those labels will actually fluctuate in size. The size of label or shapes that have the label on the inside are dictated by the label size. But if you've got a graph with nothing but labels on the outside, you can change the size of the uh, of the nodes here. And when I have a video on how to work with image sizes, you'll be able to see some information there. You can change the border length. You can change make actually create a shadow that'll occur behind it. A little difficult to see on this one because it's a gray background, but you should be able to see right here that little shadow that's kind of appeared. You can change this as well. I've never been able to actually successfully change a shape. If someone is able to successfully do that, please do let me know. I'd be very interested in seeing how that actually works. Um, and again, you can interact with the physics of the node here, but really just some bit very basic stuff that you can kind of work with um, with your nodes. And a lot of it doesn't work, but the one that you really need to be familiar with is this size option. That's probably going to be the most useful for rendering a graph 
specifically the way you want to see it. And you can also uh, mess around with the uh, the labels. You can actually add a, a box behind the label like you see here behind the four. You can do different things. Play around with these. It's worth your time to at least experiment. And I imagine as PyViz develops further uh, and they work out some of the bugs, uh, you'll see some more interesting things kind of coming out there. Uh, so I'm going to put in the interaction one now. So the interaction one, I think, is probably, dep depending on what you want to have users, uh, what you want to give users access to, this might actually be a very useful one. Uh, you can see that we, down here, we can enable navigation buttons. Uh, so you can actually plus, minus, etc. go back to the main size, go up to the, uh, to the right, down. You can actually interact with these buttons on the graph. That might be something kind of useful. Another one that's going to be useful is this multi-select option. So if you've played around with PyViz, you know that once you click off of a node and you click another one, that one is now disabled. Uh, so we can see if it's enabled because it lights up. See how the edges uh, light up and the node lights up? Well, once I click off, that's it. But if I've got multi-select uh, 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 selected, I can hold control and click it, and now I can move two nodes at the same time. This is very useful if you're trying to move an entire cluster away, uh, and you kind of want to grab a bunch of different nodes all at once. So that's something to be somewhat familiar with. Another option is this hover thing. Uh, if you actually have hover selected, you'll see that not only uh, when I simply click a node, will it actually light up? When I simply hover over an edge or a node, it will light up. So that's what the hover button is going to do. And you can do simple things. And again, all of this is controllable in your script. The reason why this is nice is because you don't have to actually program it into your script. You can just kind of experiment with what you like, what you don't like. And then here's what's really cool. If you're familiar with JavaScript, once you've got a selection of options that you really like, for whatever reason, uh, you didn't want to program everything into your script, you want to kind of just see what it looks like now, you can select all of this and actually copy and paste it into your uh, HTML file. And what this is going to do is allow you to repopulate the same graph the next time with all of these specific things selected in the options. And if we look at our HTML, I'll show you where it goes. Uh, how do I have this labeled? Letters to. So let's go letters to HTML. And we scroll down. Uh, and in a few other videos, I'm going to be explaining what's happening here in the JavaScript. But when we get down to var options, you'll see that you have it right there. This is just allowing you to easily copy and paste this information in and replace var options with whatever you want to see, or at least replace this specific part of our options. And we can see interaction right there so that when we copy and paste it in, we can actually uh, create that exact same graph the next time. So that's all I wanted to cover in this video. Um, there's a lot here that you can kind of work with. I encourage you to go and just experiment with all of these. Experiment with interaction, nodes, edges, layout, manipulation, selection, render, and we've already seen physics in detail. Uh, play around with them, but these are really the kind of main ones that you're going to want to allow users to have access to. In the next video, we're going to pick up with um, doing some more complex things to edges. I'm going to introduce you to and provide a more complex JSON file, and we're going to start mapping out more dynamic relationships. That is relationships that are not just singular in nature, so relationships that are multi-leveled. That's all for this video though. Thank you for listening, and please do subscribe down below. Thank you for watching this video. If you've enjoyed it, please like and subscribe down below and visit us at pythonhumanities.com.